first time I'm doing this, so uh, yeah, I stumble a little bit. I might call something the wrong thing, but at the in the end, it all works. I noticed a couple weeks ago a couple of small drops on the garage floor and I had to figure out where the leak was coming from. Not easy. I think I got kind of lucky because I, I cleaned everything and then when I started the engine and revved it up I could see uh, one spot up here on the top of the clutch where oil was bubbling out. Very small amount, not a lot. And what would happen is when I'd stop, it would travel along the seam underneath and drip. So after looking everywhere underneath, I realized it was coming from the top of the clutch. So uh, for this project, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the clutch and replace the gasket that's here with a new one. Uh, looks <coughs> like this. I got a new gasket for this bike, thanks to Fast Eddie. We got that here. Uh, and. Um, but some other things will be covered in the video at the same time. <clears throat> so, because I'll have the clutch open anyway, I'm going to install the safe start, which is this item right here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is drain the oil, and then I'll take the case off, take this apart. I'll have to take this, these pieces off. I have to loosen the front foot peg bolts here. I'll get the cover off, clean out whatever oil didn't drain, clean the area, uh, and in the front, I'll do the safe start. I'll be using this that came in the kit, the JB Weld. I'll be mixing this together to create like a pasty glue that goes in the back of this, and then this will stick on. <laughs> and it goes on, there's a little part in there, it goes right on there, it should be real simple. But then it has to sit for 24 hours to dry, so no writing. But uh, tomorrow, then I'll once it's all dried and cured, then I can put the new gasket on, and I'm going to show you how I do that, and um, put the cover back on, fill it up with oil again, and I'll be done. So I'm looking forward to the project. Uh, I don't know what kind of issues I'm going to run into along the way, but. Um, I'll try to help you out, help you see all of it in case you have a bike similar to this. Either this, this is a 2002 Triumph Bonneville America. So if you have the same bike or a similar bike, maybe this video will be useful for you to get some ideas as to whether this is a project you want to take on. So with that said, here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is drain the oil. So let me show you where I'm going to do the oil if you've never done the oil on this bike. Right there on the right hand side, that's what I'm going to loosen. I got this on Amazon, that's great. I'll loosen this up, put this under the bike, and the oil's got a nice wide area to drain into. And then when it's done, I plug it up, lift it up, I can take it to, there's a local place here in town where I'm, I can dispose of oil. There's all, uh, there are also shops that will I can bring this in and they'll take it and dispose of it for me at no charge. <laughs> Cracked. Okay. Now when I loosen it, that oil's gonna come out. I've been riding the bike so it might be hot. So let me get some gloves. Uh, it'll come out pretty quick, probably get me wet. startled me. It's coming out pretty quick. Much faster than the last time I did the oil change. Oh, because it's hot.
Here's the old drain plug washer. Here's the new drain plug washer. Here's the drain plug. I use this opportunity to clean up some of the gook all around it. Use some steel wool around the edge. Four zeros. Steel wool. This is almost done. It's just dripping. 20 minutes later you can still see it dripping. I'm not doing the filter today, but if I did, there it is right here, I would just unscrew that. But seeing how I did the oil change on this bike about three weeks ago, that's a good filter. I'm going to leave it. While the oil continues to drain, I'm going to start taking some things apart here. I have to take this silencer off. So, uh, and then I'll need to unscrew this, release this, unscrew this. But I'm going to start by just taking this piece off, uh, and then maybe the oil, then I need to replug the oil. Uh, so I'll do that, at the, put the oil plug back in. But uh, I'm going to take this off in the meantime uh, while I'm waiting. Do these two bolts, and then this band on the underneath here, there's another bolt. I'm gonna loosen that. And then uh, this should just slide right off. Oh, look at all that oil. I did not know that. That is all from riding. Um, wow. That's dangerous. I didn't know it. So all this time I'm like riding thinking, it's just a little drip. But look at all this coming out here. This could have easily gone. It doesn't look like it went to the brakes or the wheel, but could have. Wow. Who knew? <laughs> well, I guess some more experienced rider than me knew. I did not. Good thing I'm doing this project now and I didn't just let it keep going. As they say, one of the most dangerous things is oil on your brakes and wheels. All right, let me put this in a place where hopefully it won't scratch. Now what I'm gonna do is release this clutch cable here. It says to make note of the settings, so I'm going to take a picture. Nice couple close-ups. So when I put it back together, I can see the settings on the arm and the settings here. Okay, I'm going to loosen this up so that I can pull this out of here. Here we go. I'm just going to clean up the area a little bit and then put the plug back in. All right, it's been about 45 minutes. <clears throat> Probably don't need to wait that long, but it was still dripping, so I just let it go. And now I'm going to put the plug back in. Let's 
25. All right, I can now get this thing cleaned up and out of here. Okay, I'm now going to disconnect the breather hose from the back of the clutch casing. And this is what I want to make sure I take a picture of it so I can make sure I get the setting the same. Okay. Oh, I guess it has to come all the way out. Oh, yeah, look at that. It has to come all the way out because when this goes in, it goes in that little notch there. Okay. Put this back in here so I don't lose it. Can't get the clutch cover off unless this is removed. And the instructions say to uh, loosen these bolts right there. And that's what I'm going to do next. On this side, you got to be careful because the rear brake hose is covering this bolt. So you got to be some careful moving it. Okay. It's off enough here that I can gain access to the um, clutch cover. Okay, here we go. Uh, I've got 17 bolts to undo and let's do it. All right, I see the seal is cracked open. Now, how about down here? Let's try it down here. Ooh, here comes the oil. So I put the towel down and I hope it was enough. got these things here to pull on but I got nothing to really get in there to pull it with. Oh, there we go.
So this just bent up a little bit. I'm guessing it has to fit back inside there. Okay. Well, it's open. Okay, so to put in the safe start, I'm gonna have to take this off, this off, take these off, and then I can clean the area. And my plan is to do that next, um, so I can get the safe start on and starting to cure while I then go around and clean the edges. It said to turn it clockwise to turn to take this off. Oh, comes straight out. Here's the wavy washer everybody says don't lose. Once I get, I have to put all the stuff on it, but it'll basically go right there. And now I'll go back in. And then this will go back on. Then this will go back on. Then this will go back on, Ooh. and I'll screw it back in. Okay. So let's do that again. Oh, almost lost the. Oh, I didn't even put this back on. That goes on last, the wavy washer. I'm not losing it. It's right there with my stuff. Now let's, uh, let's go clean this thoroughly, and I'll mix the paste that comes in the kit for the safe start. Okay, here's the safe start kit. Let's, uh, let's do this. <laughs> okay, here are the instructions. I did read these all last night, but I'll take a look at them again now. Stick the white dot, there's the white dot, on the hole that is here. Okay, so here's the little cleaner. That came in the Safe Start kit. Okay. Hope it doesn't come off. It's just sort of like very gently on there. Clean the repair area. We already did that. Mix. Squeeze equal parts from each tube onto a disposable surface and mix it thoroughly. Let's apply it on this.
Okay, and on this. Now, we add this on here and then clean it up. Here goes. Okay, now let's clean up the excess. While the safe start dries, I'm going around. I've got brake clean. <laughs> I've got uh, a razor and some zero 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 seal wool and a cloth so I'm trying to clean this Uh, I'm halfway through the project and uh, right now what's happening is the the safe start which has been secured using the JB weld mixture uh, needs 24 hours to cure totally so I have more time it's I'm not there I'm not ready yet so while that continues to do its thing I've been able to clean the outside of the clutch casing uh, here so it's smooth. I'm going to double check that today. I did that yesterday. And then the, the case down here, this is the cover. I'm going to clean this totally dry. There's still oil in it and the old gasket is uh, still stuck to it. So while that's doing its thing, I'm going to clean this thoroughly. So then when it's ready, I can put it all back together. All right, well, some of these big pieces might just come off. I do have a uh, scraper. These are just uh, a box of razor blades. <clears throat> and a little razor blade tool. Let's see, I may not, may not need it for, well, you definitely need it, but some of the big stuff can come off. I want to be careful not to um, carve into the side because even the smallest little hole oil will find its way out if there's a groove made by the razor blade be careful with that but. Okay, so now I'm going to just inspect the edge of the mating surface, the edge of the clutch here. Make sure I didn't miss any old gasket that hasn't come off. So it's been 24 hours since we installed the safe start here. And the J and B weld is now cured, so that is done. 
I can now put everything back together, put the new gasket on, and let's see if I fix the problem. Okay, here are the parts exactly where I left them. I've already cleaned this so it's clean and dry. This is clean and dry here. So I'm going to start by putting this back together. Is the wavy washer everybody says don't lose. These get put into uh, 12 Newton meters. Putting the gasket on, one of the challenges is going to be getting it to stay flat on here um, while I screw the cover back on. So let me just show you something here. Um, you put this on, this is the gasket, it's just like paper. So you put this on, but it won't stay really in place very easily. I can't do this with one hand, I'm holding the camera with one hand. <laughs> but it won't stay in place very easily. So. Uh, one of the techniques that uh, Jeff Green taught me was to use these. I picked these up at the local hardware store. These are 6 millimeter or M6 rods. And what I'll do is, first of all, I'm going to spray the gasket with this uh, copper spray gasket. And this will make it a little sticky on both sides. And then what I'll do is I'll come back here and I'm going to screw, the gasket will be hanging on a couple of these and I'm going to screw these in to place here and I'll do another one probably here and maybe another one over here. I have to, I'm going to practice this because you don't have, I don't think you have many shots at it. Uh, and then that'll hold the gasket in and once it's gently there then I can apply gentle pressure with like either a wooden stick or something to just kind of get it flat all the way around. Okay, so uh, this did not work out. Here's what happened. When I was putting the cover back on, this section here um, wasn't quite fitting and I forced it. And what happened is this little spring popped out. So what I learned is that this piece, I, pulled, I just pulled this out now. You pull this out and this spring goes on the inside of it. This is an oil seal but I broke it, so I'm gonna to have to replace that part. Let's just take a look at what I broke. This is the oil seal on the front of the clutch cover. Uh, if you look at the numbers on this, uh, while there is a part number for Triumph, there, there's also numbers here that say 12, 22, seven. I found this one, before I learned what to order, I ordered this by mistake, it's, it's not the correct one. This, these numbers are, are um, 14, 22, um, and I think 4, 4.5. So this is the wrong one, and you can even see 4.5. This is 7 millimeters, this is 4.5 millimeters. So you can see it's not the right part. But 
take a look on the inside here. It does have a spring. Um, I was trying to match these up to see are they the same. They look like it, but I bent this one so much out of shape it's hard to tell. So I'm going to take the good spring and put it in here because even what I broke in mine is just the spring, not the rubber. The rubber's in great shape. Fits right in there. So I now have a repaired oil seal that can do its job on the bike. Okay, back to my workstation. It's been a couple days. I had this covering this up so that no dirt gets in there. When I come back, I will reinstall the gasket. This is much cleaner now. Okay, so this is the this is the second attempt. Uh, this is the gasket. I sprayed both sides with copper spray and I'm letting it uh, dry for 10 minutes so it becomes a little bit tacky, it's a little sticky before I attempt to put it on. On my first attempt, I didn't wait. I sprayed it and immediately brought it over and it all became slippery and, and then I was rushing. Now what I'm going to do is put this back on. Oh, I don't want it to touch each other. It's already starting to get a little stickier, which is good. Let's get rid of this. So this is really sticky now. So I can begin to, big, big difference. The first time I tried it, nothing was sticky. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's do the delicate part of putting it on. There we go. I'm gonna let it dry a little more and then Start removing some of these rods. Let's try it again.
right, I'm now putting the bolts back in, finger tight. I'm not gonna torque them up just yet, just barely putting them in. And then what I'll do is torque them, uh, I'll go crisscross so that it tightens a little e more uh, evenly. Okay, here we go. I'll start down here. Uh, next, what I'll do, and I could have put this on beforehand, um, but I'm going to wait. I've got a new one coming tomorrow, and I'm going to put the new one on instead of this. This is my repaired one that I fixed. So when the new one comes, I'm just going to compare the two and see if they are identical the newer newer ones in better shape i'll use that but that just slides right in here that's tomorrow uh, these two bolts here first just this one stripped i i went to tighten it and i went to torque it to nine newton meters and it wouldn't tighten it would get almost tight and then pop loose again so i went to the hardware store and i bought uh, these six millimeter uh, and these are uh, 50 millimeters long the, the the one that comes with the bike is 40 millimeters long I took one of these rods screwed it in as hard as far as it would go finger tight and marked it and it came out to 50 millimeters so these that are 50 millimeters are not they're too long and my hardware store didn't have like 45 so I did this, I put two washers on it, put it in, and instantly it torqued to 12, to uh, 12, uh, to nine, nine Newton meters. It's working now, they're all totally tight. The seal is here, uh, the gasket is sealed, it is on. Uh, the oil seal, I I'll install this tomorrow. Okay, so today the new oil seal came, <clears throat> and I'm glad I waited. I compared the springs to this, to the one I was going to use and they're not the same size. So now I'm going to put the new oil seal in that is the correct size. Glad I waited. Okay, this has been on for 24 hours, probably more time than I needed to allow the copper spray to cure. Uh, so that's on nice and solid. Everything's torqued. Let's put the oil seal back on. Let's reconnect the breather hose. Let's move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Here's the breather pipe, here's the breather hose. Here's the little clamp on the top that hurts your fingers. Well, it went on much easier than it came off, so that's on. Okay, now we do the cable. Reconnect that. Okay, 
I'll have to double check these once I'm all done if this is setting is correct. Okay, so now I'm going to reattach this and I need to do it to the same position it was before I started, which was a week ago. So it's a good thing. I took a picture of it. <laughs> Let's take that out completely. Oh, now it goes, you know what, now it just it went right on. Now let's tighten this to nine Newton meters. Put these bolts back in. Okay, so I put all four of these back in, uh, finger tight. Well, those two I've already torqued. Now I'll torque these ones. The correct torque is 30 newton meters. Put the silencer back on. Oh. Well, I'm gonna do a big cleaning when I'm done here, so. Not worried about that yet. I'm going to put oil in now. Here's the oil inspection window and I'm gonna, the instructions say to fill it to the top marker right there that I'm pointing at with the screwdriver and then test it out. So I'll fill it to close to that and I'm gonna do that by opening up this right here. All right, I'm gonna use this rag on the screwdriver so that I don't scratch my chrome. Okay, here it is after I've filled it. The instructions said, the repair manual says fill it to the top marker line that's on the right hand side of this glass right now, which is what I did. This is cold, so when I run it, all that oil will go into the engine, that, that level will drop down. You're supposed to run the engine for about three to five minutes and then turn it off, let it sit for three minutes and check it again. Let's do that. Choke out. Well, let's see if it starts or blows up. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so that was running for five minutes. Let's first of all check the oil. Now you're supposed to let it sit for three minutes and then check it, so uh, we'll check it in three more minutes. All right, while we're waiting for the three minute cool down, let's take a look in here. See if we see any oil leaks. Let's go look around the other side. How about underneath? Nothing wet. Those are old oil drops. All right, it's been three minutes, and you can see the oil is drained. It's all up in the engine. It's still slowly refilling in the sight glass. All right, let's, uh, let's pull it out into the driveway and get it ready for its test ride. Okay, I just got back from the test ride. I rode it for about 45 minutes, and it's amazing. There's no leaks anywhere, and uh, so far it's, it's doing great. So, successful test ride. Time to put it in for the night. <laughs>